What's up, Brew Crew? Welcome back to my Brew City Garden. Today's July 20th. It's about 75, 77 degrees out here. It's a really beautiful day, but we do have bands of rain coming through. Had massive storms come through last night, dumped probably uh, maybe two inches or so of rain, maybe more. I'm not sure. I slept through most of it. But, uh, you know, we've got a couple bands of rain coming through, but I got, it looks like just enough time to um, get the, get the midweek garden tour done. It's actually closer to the end of the week, but hey, you know, uh, life gets busy sometimes, so that's just how it goes. <clears throat> I want to give you a look around today. Everything this time of year is just amazing. The growth is, it's indescribable how quickly everything just takes off, and it really is just, just an amazing thing to watch, and this is definitely my favorite time of the gardening season, where you start to see the fruits of your labors, and everything is big and lush and green and just beautiful and all that hard work begins to pay off all right guys let's go take a look now if you remember i mentioned before about how well this squash will grow in the straw bales i've got two squash in each bale and you can barely tell that they're just grown into each other so much i mean you could really hardly tell there's two plants in each bale and they're already starting to produce. I've got several squash on the counter now, and uh, we've had a couple meals with squash in them, and we've certainly got more to come. You see here, I've got some zucchini coming down here. Squash blossoms all over the place. Uh, one, one nice thing is these squash blossoms, if you got more than what you can use, or well, what the plant can use, I should say, if you pick these, dip them in an egg wash and bread them with some cracker crumbs and fry them in real butter, oh my goodness, they are the best thing in the world to eat. Uh, around here, we call them summer morels. And uh, what a morel is, is a springtime mushroom that can be found uh, from somewhere around Georgia all the way up into Canada. And, and they're only, they only pop out of the ground for about two or three weeks a year. So they're really a delicacy and uh, we look forward to them every spring. And these are the closest thing, uh, flavor-wise, to a morel that you can find in the summertime. Oh, look, we got us a bumblebee. I think I scared them off. But we've, we've certainly got bees in the garden now. We've got fruits, we've got flowers. Look at these leaves, are just beautiful. The growth is incredible. What more could you ask for? Now, just beyond the squash on this trellis here uh, are the cucumbers. And as you can see, they're climbing almost all the way to the top of the trellis now. These things are just as healthy as can be. I haven't had any problems with pests this year, where in years prior, I've had problems with cucumber beetles. I haven't seen anything like that this year. We've got flowers, literally flowers everywhere. I picked a couple of the little pickler cucumbers last night and had them with my dinner when I got home from work and they were wonderful. I really couldn't be, couldn't be happier. It, you know, I'd say I almost planted too many. In fact, I know I planted too many, but that's okay. We'll give away what we don't eat. We'll pickle a bunch of them and we'll eat a bunch fresh. These won't go to waste. Check out these pole beans already at the top of the trellis and they're looking for more places to go they've, they've run out of room to climb and now these will these vines will come back down and start you know climbing down into the trellis uh not producing yet i haven't seen any flowers yet i have noticed a little bit of and i'll show you a little bit of japanese beetle damage it hasn't been terrible and I've, I've stayed on top of them. Uh, I'll just come out here and squish them with my hands at night while they're sleeping or mating or doing whatever it is they do. Things that they can get out of hand very quickly. Uh, once they start feeding on the plant, they will release a pheromone, which tells all the other uh, Japanese beetles that uh, this is a great place to eat. And if you don't stay on top of them before you know it, your plants will be devoured. The whole plant will have that skeletonized look to it. So if you, if you see a Japanese beetle, make sure you get that sucker ASAP, get them quick. Uh, you don't want them releasing those pheromones and attracting all their friends to your garden. But it looks like we're gonna have another very fruitful year as far as the uh, pole beans are concerned. 
and we'll definitely have more than we know what to do with. The blacktail watermelon planted in the side of the bales is doing fairly well. It's not growing nearly as quickly as um, I would have hoped. So I'm not sure what kind of harvest we'll get out of these this year. Um, I really didn't think too much about it, but the uh, on the on the south side of this location here is the cucumbers climbing on the vine, so that's probably shading these out a little bit. But uh, you know, live and learn. But if you go up to the top of the bale, these uh, cantaloupe are just taking off. They're looking really good. They're getting ready to climb this trellis. So with any luck, we'll, we'll certainly have cantaloupe uh, by the end of the summer. Well, as the rain begins to fall again, we're just gonna go ahead and continue on. Um, I'm pretty sure I won't melt. I could use a shower anyway. That's a joke. But as you can see, these things are getting eaten up pretty good. And I keep finding these, uh, the same caterpillars across the entire garden. And I'm not entirely sure what they are. Uh, need to do some more research on them. They are not cabbage loopers. I have found a couple of cabbage loopers, but but most of my pests are these green caterpillars that uh, I haven't identified yet. I really didn't want to go out and get, get some BT to spray on these, but at this point, um, and, it, and it's the same with my, uh, my Brussels sprouts on the other side of the garden, they're just getting eaten alive. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some BT, get some ordered and start spraying for that next week. Peppers are looking really nice. Got some cayennes that are looking good. Um, I didn't mention the other week, this plant that was uh, laying down like a carpet, I actually broke it. I, I think I broke it. I was dragging the hose uh, through the garden. I think the hose just kind of slipped up over the top of the bale there and, and snapped like half of that plant off. And now it's growing upright. So I don't know, plants are weird. Jalapenos, looking nice, lots of fruits. Always love a good jalapeno. That's about as hot as I like to go. And as I say that, I'm looking at these habaneros, wondering oh, what the hell am I gonna do with those? The Jimmy Nardellos are producing like mad now. And these, uh, they may look like a hot pepper, but they're sweet and they are delicious. When these things just turn red or about half red, oh, it's like eating a little piece of pepper candy. And they're really good really good otherwise everything else looks good bell peppers look nice then beyond that are the, the tomato plants and planted in the sides of the bales over there are uh, the the acorn or the butternut squash I'm not sure I've got acorn squash in the sides here and I think butternut in the sides here which are doing really well actually um, the the color in them is a little bit light but i sprayed uh, i sprayed the whole garden with a calcium magnesium um, foliar spray the other night for the first time so uh, we should see any of the light green start to go away and i'll show you the product i use here in a little bit so tomatoes look great a lot of flowers everything looks good and uh Sorry, I try not to make you sick here. And of course the carrots. The carrots have uh, their first two leaves on them now. So I can really stop babying them. The weather's cooled down. Obviously it's raining today. So uh, these things are off to a great start. And as long as the weather doesn't get too out of hand, I think we'll have a very successful carrot harvest this fall. Really looking forward to that. I I'm really glad to see that. Because uh, as you know, we had some some carrot struggles this year. The struggle is real, but we got it fixed. So it's a good thing. I love my garden. The Swiss chard looks great. It's coming in nice and thick. Uh, if you can kind of tell by the, the shape in the leaves, I do have those caterpillars on my uh, Swiss chard as well. So I just come out every night and pick a couple of them off. And it seems like they just keep coming back. So again, I'm going to get that BT spray and start spraying next week. And hopefully we'll just eliminate all these caterpillars altogether. Um, I really don't like using sprays if I don't have to. But BT is an all-natural product. It is um, uh, an organic listed or safe product, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, I am not an organic gardener. Uh, I'm a clean gardener, so I don't like to use any chemical sprays or pesticides uh, that could be dangerous to uh, not only um, what the wildlife, but to our family, the stuff's going on the table. So, but uh, BT, I've got no issues with whatsoever. It is safe to use and it's safe to, to, to put on the table. So chart looks good. The uh, eggplant is growing very nicely. I've got quite a few blossoms on here now. Uh, no fruits yet, but uh, I don't know. Like I said, it's the first time growing this for me this year. So we'll see how this turns out. I'd say it looks pretty good though. So uh, hoping to get some eggplant this year and, and experiment with it, and play around and, and see how it tastes. The straw bill garden as a whole just looks just amazing. It really does. Like I said, I've got about 30 bales here and the production out of these, and I could get even more production if I, if I utilize the sides of the bales even more, but just what an incredible gardening style, especially if you don't want to dig up your yard or make anything permanent. You know, these posts will come out real quick. And if I lift up the bales and the weed matting underneath the bales and throw some grass seed down, next year you'd never know there was a garden here so it's just an incredible way to garden and uh, the results well they speak for themselves so if you've seen in previous videos or if you're following my facebook page you'll know that i'm really excited about the tobacco this year and we do have flowers now and just to give you some perspective i'm a pretty big guy i'm five foot ten inches tall and these tobacco plants Some of them are taller than I am. And the leaves are just incredible. They're just huge. I mean, what a cool plant to grow. These things are awesome. And then here on the other side of the tobacco is my yakon, which is doing great. Uh, and I can't wait to show you what the yakon tubers look like in the fall and how I pack up the rhizomes for the winter time and how we can propagate these year after year. Uh, I probably don't have to explain the, the potatoes too much. I think most people are very familiar. But as you can see, these things look great. We're going to have a huge potato harvest this year, and I can't wait to see it. Just a quick update on the papalo. As you can see, these are looking really nice. Uh, starting to get uh, two leaves on them now. And if I count, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a 20% germination rate, um, which is about what I was expecting. And looks like these things are doing really well. Uh, I got them here in kind of a uh, protected area where they get uh, a little bit of the mist from the rain. And uh, I don't have to worry about them getting whipped around in the wind. They get uh, morning sun, afternoon shade, and uh, that seems to be what they like. So it looks really good. I can't wait to try these. We're getting our first uh, beefsteak tomatoes these steak style tomatoes, I should say, out of the uh, tomato bucket garden. I've already picked a couple of little cherry tomatoes and everything, as you can see, looks very nice here in the tomato bucket garden. Oh, and real quick, before I forget, the okra, they transplanted very well. I was actually afraid that this one right here wouldn't make it because I split the, um, the tap root, when I was breaking up the roots, uh, if you recall, they were very root bound. So I didn't know if that one was going to make it or not. But uh, as you can see, they're they're happy. They look really good, except for that one. Oh well, can't win them all. Well, guys, thanks again for joining me here today at the Brew City Garden. As you can see, the garden speaks for itself. The results from these straw bills are amazing. And the nice thing is I can use this straw after this year to put throughout the rest of the garden, which makes it amazing as well. It really is an awesome way to garden. If you haven't done it yet or looked into it, come on guys, you gotta, you gotta at least give it a try. You can't argue with the results, they're pretty awesome. As I mentioned before, I sprayed the garden the other night with a, with a calcium magnesium supplement. And, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just use this Botanicare CalMag Plus. And uh, I think this bottle was like $14 US. And this will last me, uh, geez, probably two or three years. This, I use 
um, a half a tablespoon per gallon, or probably not even that, a little less than half a tablespoon per gallon. And that's a lot. I mean, this will go forever. So, you know, a lot of times if you've got a magnesium deficiency, uh, you'll notice the, the, the yellowing of the leaves with the green veins. If you've got a calcium deficiency, you'll end up with blossom end rot. And those things are usually fairly easily remedied. But if you're still having trouble after you try to, the Epsom salts, after you try to get your watering schedule figured out, if you're still having some issues, this is a really great product to pick up. And uh, it's kind of a no brainer. You just foliar spray the leaves at night and uh, it just it really helps a lot. Yeah. Hopefully we won't have any issues with Blossom End Rot this year. Anyway, with that, thanks for, for braving the rain with me today. Uh, don't forget, I did create a Facebook page. You can find me on Facebook at Brew City Gardener. And I'm starting to put the, uh, the, the group that, that goes with the page together. It's kind of a work in progress, so bear with me. Uh, we'll get there. It's, it's actually a lot of work putting one of these groups together. I had no idea. <laughs> so those of you that have already done it, props to you. Uh, and any tips would be welcome, too. And uh, if you like what you see here, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button right there and share this with a friend. That's going to help me out a lot. All right, guys. It's time for me to get out of here. We'll see you.